Hey Legionnaires, and welcome back. We're here with another Napoleon Toes of War 3 battle for you today, and it's starting off with a very uh, bold charge from this cavalry here. You can see this cavalry unit from the British has charged out and destroyed a Swiss gun. Um, yeah, I've decided to start now as the uh, the armies are getting pretty damn close. And uh, yeah, I saw this as, like a, uh, a pretty major like point. Like this Swiss uh, gun has already lost. Is it? Is a huge loss for the Swiss. I mean, they already actually lost another one over here, um, which I like in another cavalry charge. That's all you missed really was this uh, Swiss gun being taken out. So they, I don't think the Swiss have any artillery left now. Um, yeah, as far as I can see, the Swiss have lost all their artillery in two tiny little cavalry charges, which is a huge loss um, for like as the game goes on. Because the British can now just sit, sit back and just bombard them. But as you can see, they're already opening fire with some, uh, I presume this is some light infantry here. There's no light infantry. Already firing and doing some damage across the, uh, across, across the water. But yes, it, this was sent in by a member of the Discord. Um, if you would like to see more NTW3, then uh, do leave a like, subscribe for you around here, and a comment show your support. And don't forget to hit the no notification bell so you know when all my videos are coming out. I upload every single day. And also, if you want to join the Discord, the link is down below in the description. You are more than welcome to join. Get involved in some NTW3 or some uh, any Total War, really. Any Total War, you're more than welcome to get involved in. Or just to get involved in some uh, more events, like we have a Rome 2 tournament going on at the moment on the uh, on the Discord. If you want to get involved in some tourneys, then also do join the Discord. But as we can see, we have a nice 3v3 starting to set up here. We have Britain, we have the Helder Expedition, which is like a Russian and a British combo we then have the portuguese over here which i don't think we've actually seen in a uh, replay yet portuguese here which are obviously an ally of britain in the peninsula campaign and they're just routing some uh, some swiss cavalry here which i think just like ran up here did not see all this infantry here and just got shot to pieces by infantry and this cavalry just routed it to make sure yeah the swiss are holding this uh, nice little position here we have the uh, french flanking on in here they're going to be threatening the flank of the uh, portuguese i would expect them to be pretty aggressive and then we have, in the rear, coming up to support the Swiss, we have the Poles. Which are an ally of uh, the French during like the Russian, well just during the entire war to be fair, they are allies of the French. See the British are already setting up cold stream guards. I wonder whether they're going to uh, send in troops into this town hall to try and uh, take it for themselves. I could see that happening quite likely. Yep, looks like they're about to go in. A really elite unit. But it's a good unit that will be able to take out this building. I mean, it's only line infantry in here for the Swiss. And here they go. In they go. Yes, yeah, red on red uniforms there. And you imagine that the uh, the English will win that, you imagine. And you got a six-pounder foot artillery here. It's saying, up. Oh, this is just getting some nice little shots in here. I can't exactly see what it's firing at. I imagine it's firing at those Swiss formations that are now falling back. Yeah, you can see like they've got line infantry that is uh, falling back. Actually, it's advancing. It's advancing, and I imagine that's supposed to get shot. Or maybe uh, this Swiss foot uh, horse artillery that's now set up. Quite possibly could be either. I mean, the British could just set up another horse, uh, like another bit of cavalry, and they could just route it. There's nothing around this uh, artillery piece. Surprising that the uh, Poles, by the way, only brought like two or three, I think they brought two units of cavalry, and the Poles are some of the best cavalry in the game. It's kind of surprising they didn't uh, capitalize on that. The Swiss here, firing into this building, trying to support the fight here. They should really be firing at all the units here, they're just facing them. Like, these units of uh, British infantry are getting some nice easy shots into the flank of uh, that Swiss unit there, which is now breaking, or it's going to break. But this is the Peninsula British Army, so this is a very elite British force. Fought Napoleon for many years, or his marshals. And eventually invades France. And there you go, I think uh, the British have just taken this building here with the Coldstream Guards. 86 of them left, just taking this building. So they now hold this, like, this end of the uh, village. I personally think that the French should be aggressive against Poland, uh, Poland against uh, Portugal. Because I bet Portugal's infantry is not great, and they could definitely beat it. And uh, this is 1805-1808 France. It's a pretty good France. Yeah, I mean, this infantry is good. I mean, it probably is, like, okay. But it's not going to stop the French, I imagine. And uh, I don't... Yeah, I think Poles are pretty, like, low-tier, like, faction to bring in comparison. Like, Britain is who France really should be facing up against because they're the two juggernauts. 
Helder expeditions are also pretty good. They've got like a good combo of like Russian infantry and uh, British cavalry and stuff like that. So they've got a good combo. And you can see, here you go. I said it would happen. They're going to just take their other, like, take out this other gun with this uh, Russian cavalry. And it's just too late. Look at this. And they're gone. That's <laughs> gone. Well, actually, I say that. It might not be. No, the fr the uh, Russian cavalry is gonna, or the Helder cavalry is gonna just about break. And actually, so does the uh, so does the guns. That's so unfortunate. Right at the last moment, they break. That's a six pounder a horse artillery gone just like that. You see the poles now bringing around huge units of uh, Ullum cavalry here, some Lancer cavalry. These guys are quite, probably quite elite cavalry, 121 in a unit. It's very nice. But they've got some King's Own uh, dragoons over here. And what we got here? We've got some Brunswick Cussars. So we've got some pretty good cavalry that can stop and uh, hold this uh, Ullen Lance uh, cavalry in place. Well, they've got another unit here, another Light Dragoon. And the Swiss, yeah, have already been pushed back there. Your infantry is not as good. I mean, they're probably getting, yeah, outgunned here. They're suddenly getting outflanked, as you can see by this force here. So they need to be careful. I personally think that France, I mean, Poland needs to go up here and support quickly. Poland's infantry is still a long, long way away, though. And he stopped it. Poland needs to get a move on. He needs to keep moving his infantry up. He needs to threaten the flank of Britain. Britain is set up and ready for him, though. You can see he's got so much infantry facing towards this, uh, like, river area, this marshy area here. So he is ready for him. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate, but he's got to do what he can. I mean, also, I've just seen, look at this infantry. It's just getting ripped to shreds by artillery here. It's poor infantry, all in their red uniforms. What are they even firing at? I guess these uh, South Gloucester here, here, but they, yeah, you can see the guns just keep forcing back the, uh, the Swiss. They keep getting forced back further and further away, and eventually they're going to be forced out of this uh, village. You imagine? Over on the uh, far side over here, it looks like the looks like the French are starting to get engaged in some uh, areas, starting to push up their infantry. They realise that they need to get a move on. Look how far wide the French cavalry is. That is a really big flank, and I mean Portugal's cavalry, I wouldn't imagine, can stop it. I could be wrong, and it could be able to, but I mean, we've got some big units of Crassius here, Dragoons, Chesters. Um, so, I don't know. It'll be interesting. What have they got? They've just got, like, volunteers, volunteers and Cavalry Battalion. I don't know if they're good or not. I've not seen them in action. Got a nice little gun emplacement up here. Kind of firing into the uh, woods, though. Don't think that'll be helping. But if the French can close this distance, they can probably get in there. But there's a uh, carry unit in behind here. The Portuguese have got a carry unit in behind. And they're able to go after... They're going to be able to go after the Polish uh, general, I believe this is. And this could be huge. They can kill Polish general off. Look at that. He's going to break, I think. And I believe this is Poland's, uh, Poland's general. And he's just broken. Just like that. And yeah, po I believe it probably is. Because you can see the chasseur unit here is desperately trying to set up. Got some... Uh, Light infantry here trying to shoot down the cavalry. They have routed it. But that's huge. Opponent, I think it's also general. I can't see any units over here. That would be a general unit. And have these poles broken? No, no. That's just another Ullen unit. It's still very much intact. But yeah, Poland's was a general before even the battles, like his infantry has even arrived. And his infantry is not great. Um, which is why he should really be bringing. Uh, Lots of cavalry, but his infantry just look amazing. Poles are great. The general's under attack. And there you go. Who's who do we have over here? We have Davout leading the uh, French forces today. Hey guys, apologies for that. The game decided to crash as soon as I decided to go and look at like why the general was under attack. It just decided to crash. So we're back anyway at this point. Um, this is the French general apparently gives like a random cannibal shot near him. Agat says. The general's under attack. He's not really. But anyway, yeah, we're back. The French are starting to advance up here. As you can see, the Portuguese are now under some pressure from the French infantry. French cavalry's way in behind, as you can see. Still keeping this uh, Portuguese cavalry uh, occupied, really, which is probably a good idea. I mean, the French infantry can probably beat the Portuguese very easily. I mean, they have the numbers um, and the quality. They can probably just overwhelm uh, the Portuguese here while the cavalry's just busy just looking here. Otherwise, the cavalry, like the Portuguese cavalry, can get involved in the front line. And uh, just could do some to uh, do some damage there, but now it's uh, being held up here. Um, other news that's happening really: the Helder expedition has finally appeared, and it's now putting a lot of pressure on the Swiss as well. So the Swiss are kind of getting double teamed here by Britain and uh, the Helder expedition. 
So yeah, you can see we've got like some English infantry here, some uh, Northumbrians. They're from like the early period, like just this is like just as the Revolutionary War is kind of coming to an end. These uh, British all infantry. Hope is lost, this battle is almost done. Apparently, all hope is lost, though. Uh, I don't think it is. I think we're just getting started, mate. So uh, I feel like we've got a little bit more time in this uh, battle. As you can see, the uh, Helder expedition getting some uh, a lot of volleys onto these Swiss, and the Swiss are just not able to fire every single unit. Like this unit here, for instance, um, it's got like one, two units firing at it. Actually, then this one probably's got more. Even this one's got definitely two here. And they just can't fire at all these positions at once, that's the thing. They can, only, they can only fire at one unit. Like this one here, for instance, is getting absolutely destroyed, these swords. If I can hear cavalry moving. Oh, we have French cavalry coming up. We have French cavalry. So we have some dragoons here. They've gone in, and they're going to be able to do some devastating damage to this uh, infantry here. These infantry need to hold fire so they don't shoot their cavalry, because they could break both these units here. The French need to start pivoting these units and start just flanking it, and they're going to do just that. Perfect. Just as on cue. And you can see the French here doing a lot of damage, and they're breaking the uh, Portuguese infantry from just musket fire. And the Portuguese cav is still, like, occupied back there, and so is Helder's. I held the expeditions, and they've broken those two units, and now they can go into, like, another unit if they wanted to. They're winded, they could probably take on another quite easily. There's a big Portuguese unit coming up here, though. Take this one on if they want. And these look like they're volunteers or something like that. Yeah, these are volunteers of the Algarve. They're not going to be holding long. These guys are just going to be militia. They're just pretty terrible. So no wonder they're such a huge unit. Yeah, but they're going to break this unit. There's another infantry unit here, though. Uh, they can form square. That's going to be saved from the uh, French cavalry. And you can see the Portuguese cavalry is now coming over. So they want to probably get this uh, Dragoon unit out of here. Well, it, uh, it's got a bit of a chance to, like, pull back, redeploy. They might be able to use it again, or maybe they're just going to commit. They certainly want to be focusing this unit down with their uh, infantry while it's in squ square formation. It, they can't fire as much as they uh, oh, would like if it's in square. The French now sent their cavalry in here. They've got some good charges off the crasses, chasing down these volunteers, and they've broken them just like that. The centre is just gone. The uh, Portuguese cavalry has been routed by one unit of crasses. These French units could now fly in and deal with that cavalry if the unit if they wanted to. The crassiers are now going into an infantry unit back here as well. They're going to break them easily. This is the, the, the elites of the French cavalry, and yeah, they can already see, look at this cavalry unit, it's just annihilated four units on its own, it's only lost like 20 odd men, and it could go on, they can go on to the uh, guns now, and the rear of the Portuguese army is very much exposed, the Portuguese I think are out, I don't want to be that so definitive on them, because uh, they could make a comeback, but I mean, they're under a lot of threat, like Helder needs to send over their cavalry like soon, these uh, dragoons here, they need to get moving, um, or they might want to retreat and just go and defend their own army's flank. Will they just condemn Portugal? They might do. But it certainly will be interesting. Certainly will be interesting. You can see here, though, the, the French need to get over quickly over here to help help uh, like help out against the Brits and the uh, Helder expedition. Because the Swiss and the Poles, which are now arriving into the uh, village, are getting absolutely penned down. I don't know why the Poles don't make an offensive across here. Just take some heat off the Swiss. Force the British to bring more regiments over here. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll go back over here quickly. Uh, I just want to see, like, the end of the uh, Portuguese, because it is going to be the end. Look at all the routing units. This, the French have just got the better quality. It was not a good matchup. See the Swiss, uh, see the French and the uh, Portuguese go against each other. Portuguese here, look at them. They're desperately oh, trying man, to reload their guns, like, fire, man, fire! And there you go, they're breaking just like that, and the uh, Chasseurs is coming to... Oh no, the Chasseurs broke actually, to be fair. That's a big win possibly for the Portuguese. This took some more cavalry down with them. This uh, Karassia unit might want to just slow down a bit. It's tired at the moment, it's going to go into these uh, these Dragoons here of Helder Expedition. I don't know whether they'll win this one. Oh, they might do, just off sheer numbers. They might do off just sheer numbers. There is more Swiss cavalry coming over. We've got Dragoons now coming over here. So even the Swiss are getting involved in the antics. They need to be careful. They don't want to go and tire out all their cavalry now. They might win this fight here. Yeah, Helder Expedition is going to lose this fight. You imagine. Yep, there you go. They lost. And this French cavalry needs to just slow down. It needs to fall back. It needs to be careful. Um... Because now there's a lot of infantry coming up, and it's tired, so they don't want to send it in to like the next combat. I think fall it back. Yes, it's eager, but it's very tired now. 
He needs to fall back. Get some, uh, just get some rest, the then send it back in. And uh, but it looks like the uh, Swiss Dragoon's going to carry on in. They don't mind. They're pretty fresh, to be fair. They're all going to try and they're, all these units here can form square. So the Swiss need to be going after. I don't know what they go after. They, yeah, that's a poor move, I think, by the Swiss. They should have waited. Like these units just are not worthy going after. You can't send cavalry in like this un unspoiled. It needs infantry. The French infantry needs to come up and support. Luckily, the French is pulling back their cavalry. And yeah, all that's left of the uh, Portuguese is like one unit of infantry. And this uh, unit of infantry in this uh, house here. They just need to storm it. Or just avoid it. Just leave it. If the French just walk around it, they could just leave this unit. Yeah, then the Portuguese just in this building. Kind of useless there. But yeah, you can see Helder Expedition now is going to be forming up a new line to defend against the French. If this is it, though, that he's got to defend against the French, that's a bad sign. He is still committing a lot against the Swiss. They are desperately trying to get in here, but the uh, Polish are now in here, so they're going to be able to support... Certainly. I mean, they've got, like, infantry ready. They don't need this infantry in here, I'd say, though. Like, get this out of here and get it somewhere else in another line. Is it here, uh, Cavalry's gone in, though. We have British Cavalry going in against Chevalegers of the Swiss. This is King's German Legion in here. King's German Legion of the Goons. It's a red versus red. And yeah, they're winning apparently at the uh, British. No surprise there, they're probably better. The Swiss are setting up more infantry here. They're going to try and duke out with these Helder Expedition. Let's have a volley from your Swiss. Nope, they're going to retreat. They're going to fire a couple of shots and they're going to retreat. Or just form a big club like that and make it very easy for the Helder Expedition just to shoot them. I think they're falling back because they realize this King German Legion is into their back lines. The Polish here, they've got some Polish Grenadiers. They're going to be able to fire point blank into those infantry there. Or into the infantry, into the cavalry, sorry. And into the infantry, technically, I guess. We're going to get some friendly fire on these uh, Swiss. Should break these uh, King's German Legion, I thought. No, they're going to carry on. Wow, this King's German Legion is not going to give up. And you can see the Helder Expedition now has gone for some bayonet charges. I don't know how good they are in bayonet charges, but they'll probably be okay against the Swiss. And it looks like they are breaking them, yep. The Swiss are in full retreat, to be honest. They are, I mean, they're just getting overwhelmed bit by bit. And they've got, like, King's German Legion, like, foot in here. They've got a lot of infantry in here. The French need to get a move on. They need to just overwhelm this little uh, Helder Expedition flank. And you can see they are setting up infantry now. And they probably want to start sending some, like, diverting some forces into the village. Um, because they're just so far behind are the uh, the Swiss and the Poles in, like, like infantry-wise. You see this little gun team, it's got 12 pounders all the way back here. Oh, they're putting fire onto that building. I don't know where that's really a great idea. It doesn't look like anyone's in it now. Just, I just start uh, limbering up your guns and start getting them over here to help with the Hel Helder expedition. Looks like we're about to see some line battles take place. Maybe. Maybe not. It's a lot of line infantry here. Oh, there we go. Got some, uh, got some Russian Strelki over here. They're going to just take some sharp shooting shots against some of this Karasia unit, which has still got over 100 men in it. It's a nasty, nasty unit. They need to yeah, push forward with the infantry here. And then if they form square, the infantry can just open fire. This cavalry here just threatens and make, uh, forces the infantry to possibly form square. But here we go. We've got a, a Dragoon unit coming in. And they're going to be able to route this Strelki pretty easily. And if these units don't form square, like the John Moore uh, Highlanders don't form square, then they're going to get routed. Here we go, infantry now opening fire for the uh, British and the French. And they're actually forming, uh, falling back. They realize what's going on there. This Cameron Highlander, though, is going to probably get chopped down by the uh, by the French cavalry, you imagine. They're forming square, though, with the rest of the Helder expedition. Form square, stop the cavalry! And they're actually, are they, are they going to put this unit inside the square? So that's a really nice play. Yeah, they are. That's really well played there by the Helder Expedition. And now he's going to charge forward the, the Highlanders. The Highlanders, which are renowned for their uh, military prowess, going in for a charge here. They're going to get volleyed. Oh, and they get focused down to point blank range. And these guys are probably going to break on impact. That is a nasty, nasty volley. These guys just got absolutely, like, destroyed with uh, musket fire. And they still are. Just into the flanks. And there they go. They break. 
Very, very nice. What a nice volley by the French at the last minute. Now he's just getting gunned down as they retreat. And held the expedition fullbacks again. He's got his gun here running back desperately. It's a Russian six pounder. And yeah, the Swiss look that like they're basically gone. I can barely see any Swiss banners left. The Poles are now setting up in here with some infantry. Um, their infantry might be better. Volley into the side of the British. Yeah, it's a nice, nice little flank there. And now because it's kind of setting up like a proper line battle again. Like in here, it's kind of a bit mixed up with the lines. Um, but now that the French are threatening this flank, it's going to kind of turn into a line battle um, across this area here. Britain's going to kind of hold this hut side of like this uh, this village. And the Poles are going to start uh, threatening again here. They've actually sent forward a, a charge here, the Grenadiers. Don't know whether that was a great idea. These Grenadiers might be better just uh, staying uh, in the line. I mean, he nearly broke through these. East Norfolk are really low. These units are pretty low here. Britain is pretty uh, pretty low on infantry. He's uh, been in the battle a lot longer than, say, the French have or the Poles. They could do a setting up their infantry here. Though. These infantry here are just getting probably like focused on by artillery. They've got more Grenadiers back here. Grenadiers of Warsaw. Got lots more line infantry. I mean, they could definitely, if they wanted to, they could go really wide with the uh, poles. They could uh, try and threaten the uh, British flank again. Just be pretty passive here. Just like look at them, and then just make a big old push around here. Push back this cavalry if they wanted to. Oh, the British cavalry is actually beating the poles. I did not realise this. So all that Polish cavalry, which is supposedly like some of the best in the game, just got beaten by all this Bedfordshire cavalry. Where's that other Polish cavalry? There's a huge 120 odd man unit of Polish cavalry. And it's nowhere to be seen. Uh, the French just routing some British air. That's a big win. Getting rid of that uh, King's German Legion light. But yeah, now the Polish rear is in, under threat. So they can't do that big push. Uh, I thought they had that, like the Polish cavalry still around. But I don't know where that, that huge one went. Is it here? That, there it is. There's a... Uh, or is one of them anyway. And this is the Swiss. This is the Swiss Dragoons here. Probably want to send the Swiss Dragoons out to help the Poles. And the French cavalry is still an ever like present threat here. We'll just go after anything it wanted. Go after all this cavalry back here if it wants. This is just like really light cavalry. And then after it can take these guys out, can then just threaten the rear of any of these formations. They got their artillery now in the front line. Desperately trying to put some holes into this uh, French line. They probably are doing some good damage with the round, uh, with like the shots here. French don't care though. They're going to keep pushing forward. They're now linking up the poles. You can see the form in square. Uh, because I think they're going after, yeah, they're going to go after the Russian cavalry. I don't know if these guys are pretty tired. Yeah, they are. They're really tired. I don't know if they'll be able to beat them. It's not even Russian cav. It's, uh, well, it's British cav and uh, some crassies. Yeah, they, look at that. Those dragoons broke because they're really tired. And they outnumbered the, uh, like, the uh, lancers here. Like, the light, inf the light cav. The Crassies are going to go in. They're really tired as well. These guys need some rest. They just need to, like, just need to slow down. Just need to slow down a little bit. I mean, they might break them. No. No, it seems not. This Crassie, though, is right in behind now. I mean, he's possibly being a bit too aggressive with it. I think to slow down It's a really good asset to have. And he's getting gunned down now by uh, foot guards. These guys here just gunning them down. And by the sustained fire, so they're still in range here. The Crassies just need to get out of there. They're going to actually get charged by another King's German Legion. They're so far behind enemy lines now that they can't get any support from infantry, which is where they were doing really well. The uh, Swiss Dragoons are coming. I imagine they're going to rush for the guns here. Yep, yeah, here they come, rushing for the guns. Oh, and they missed the, uh, the Dragoons just by an inches. Just by an inches. Just by inches. Um, but yeah, then the Helder Expedition sending those... Uh, ca uh, those um, Cossacks again, and the dragoons here should break these uh, these guns, and these, these will uh, be a big loss for the allies. Yeah, they've broken all of them, I think. I think they just, yeah, they've broken all the guns. So yeah, this dragoon's kind of done its job. It's going to go in. It's going to cause a bit of havoc into the back line. It's going to go for a uh, Frederick York. It's going to go for the Helder Expeditions General. Try and get a bit of revenge on the uh, Polish general being taken out. Don't know if they'll get him. 
going to form square and he's probably going to hide in one of these squares. We've got a Thomas Grant, uh, Graham here as well. Probably going to take him out. And now this Dragoon's going to go into the backs of this uh, Helder Expedition here. This Swiss Dragoon's actually doing a lot better than I thought it would. It seems to just like not be getting fired on by any of this infantry, or it's not getting fired on enough. Um, and the Crassies are still over here. So I think the French are certainly turning it around. I mean, the Helder Expedition is just not able to stop the French. Like that. Um, the Swiss are just by holding by their fingernails with the remains of the Poles as well. Well, the Poles look a little bit more fresh than the Swiss, you should say. The Poles keep sending stuff across this river, and it's just not, it's just not working. Like, these guns are just focusing on this 9 pounder here, and then all the infantry as well. Like, all this infantry is just, it's not good infantry. They should be bringing it across, like, safely over here, and then bringing it around, instead of going across the river, where they're getting slowed down, getting focused down by infantry. Can't even see, like, the light battle going on there. Look at that, that looks awesome. There's the line battle going on. Cannon, abandoned cannons just there. That's what's so good about Napoleon, it's just the chaos that like, ensues. The Brits are just about holding on here, their morale's low though. He's Cumberland foot, not looking so healthy. For king and countrymen, hold. No man shall retreat. Very Russian like that would be. Yeah, they might retreat in a moment though. Especially with the French coming around, they can just not, like they can overwhelm this flank now. They have so much infantry, and the crab, the cavalry is still here. They only need one unit of cavalry now, I think. Where's the rest of that British cavalry that was like threatening the uh, poles? I don't know. Oh, it's over here. It's all the way over here, and it's going for the uh, French artillery. Not a bad idea, to be fair. But the French artillery's been out of the game for ages. Like this would be a, like a great asset for the French, but they don't really need it. Um, these guys are winded, but they're not going to turn their guns around in time. The second one might, if, they, if they're loaded. But these, uh, oh, I don't know, they're pretty low on morale as they came charging in, but they're going to probably break this artery easily. They might not get the second one. No, they, they're going to get the second one. Running. Oh my gosh, they're going to take up both units, aren't they? Yep. Ah, they just need that general over there. Where's um, Davu? He could have just been here just chilling and just could have turned this, this uh, artillery piece quite easily on his own. But it's not to be. It's not to be, it would seem. Um, yeah, all that all that British carry I thought was around the back here. It's gone, really. That's just what's left of it. That unit we just saw just right all the artillery. Now you can see the poles are now setting up again. I mean, there's definitely like several units that have died in this position here. And they're like, no, it's fine. Third, third one will do the trick. I do love their uniforms, though. They've got something awesome uniform. Look at the hats. Look at the color, different colored hats. It's awesome. Such a good looking faction. Our men are running for Poles are charging in again. What's this? Some more uh, infantry charging in. I don't think the Polish infantry is better than the English infantry in combat. Or like the British infantry in combat. You see they're really falling back now. The Helder Expedition falling back on themselves. And uh, this Pole somehow got a unit in here. And it's going to get flanked on both sides. How they did this, I'm not sure. But they managed to sneak a unit through. And it's going to flank on in. It's going really deep into enemy lines. It's just trying to break up the uh, formations, I think. But it's going to break. I don't think they're going to break the infantry of uh, Britain. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Nope, there it goes, breaking. They need to get some more volleys into these units. I think it would be better to just, with sustained musket fire to break the British. Because they are breaking. Look at this. They're actually a big chain right now going in the center of the British formation. Britain's lost a lot on this flank over here as well. And now see the uh, poles starting to push units around here. Should have been doing this a long time ago, I think. The Portuguese are still alive, though. I didn't even see this. That's that's huge. Good old Portugal still kicking about. They're going to defend this flank against the Polish army. This artillery piece is in a very dangerous position. I hope this fires. Just because it looked funny. Oh, this is going to hurt. Yeah, look at these poor guys here. This one's going to fire, I thought. Yeah, here he goes. This is going to fire this gun right in the back of his own mouth. Oh, no! <laughs> got to be careful when you're setting up the units. And that uh, Helder Expedition is going to break because it just got shot in the back. It does so much damage to morale when you just get your unit. I mean, that's one way to get the infantry out of your out of your way. Just shoot it in the back. Clear the allies here not having a having a good time, not having some uh, like what, any organization here. And now they're going to be able to fire a canister. The uh, French, that should do a lot of damage. Not that we can really see. Let's try and watch from the French perspective as the men go get dropped. Oh, oh, 
Uh, he's gonna have to get really close. Yeah, they're getting even closer now. They're making even more effective the canister shots. Oh, the Swiss going charging in. They're gonna try and occupy the uh, guns, I think. Like, really, the Poles should push up. They could go for this gun now. I mean, now that they're they're in the way, these guns can't fire. They're gonna break their own Helder expedition again doing this. And the gun and crew's actually gone into combat. That's good. Now the French can push up. They should push up now while the uh, guns are no longer in action. The British are uh, still pushing units around. The Poles are now uh, threatening this flank. They're now firing on the uh, British in two positions on the flank and they're on sent, like, head on. Poles in white uniform here. We've got support from the unit in the building here as well across the river. That's really cool. Firing across the river, you must be. You're probably not going to hit anything. They're getting like a line for unit in there. Like, they're actually losing though. The Poles are getting flanked by the British here. It's probably not helping. Um, the Poles just sending in more and more infantry in combat. They're absolute madmen. Maybe a bit wasteful, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Where's that Karasio unit? Is it still alive? No, I don't think it is. Where did that Karasio unit go? But here comes the uh, light cavalry, the Bedfordshire, uh, no this is King's Own Dragoons here. So there is actually still two cavalry units alive, I think this is one of them, and there's the Bedfordshire light dragoons somewhere, wherever they are. Um, is this the French cavalry all the way over here? No, this is just a French artillery piece which has been abandoned. Okay, interesting. Um, so yeah, we're going to see what this uh, light dragoon can do, it looks like it's going to try and go after uh, maybe some infantry back here, maybe the French general who's up here. Not quite sure, but at the end, where did that Carassia go then? Did it die over here? I don't think so. It was in healthy numbers when I last checked. But the French are now pushing in. They're going to take this area here. Pushing back the British. They're now just on down to this. But this Bedfordshire... Uh, it's not Bedfordshire. It's not the King's, uh, King's own Dragoons could do some damage. Yeah, I'm still kind of perplexed where that... What happened to the Carassias? But in go the Poles. They're just going to charge on in. They don't care. The Grenadiers said care. Uh, charging against foot guards and Coldstream guards. Yeah, they're not going to win that. They are not going to win that. Even though the Polish, uh, Polish Grenadiers are really cool, they're not going to win that. It'd be better just uh, routing all the infantry that's left and then going for the uh, for the building. French here, though, they're setting up. Firing in line. Let's have a volley from you men. Oh, but it looks like the uh, Dragoon's going. I'm going to have to avoid watching the French. The Dragoon's look like they were going to make a move there. Bland's Dragoon's. Here they go. Into this infantry. It's a pretty weakened infantry unit. Might route this one. But they're getting uh, shot on by units that can form square. And uh, units that are looking the other way. So, yeah. I mean, this one might go as well. They might actually route a few units of infantry here. With a tiny unit of uh, like British carry. It's half strength now. He's certainly turning some of the French units around and having to deal with it. I'd probably just charge bayonet charges this cavalry. See if they appreciate that. Probably not. What's over here? What have we got here? Oh, this is, I thought that was a carry unit from the poles, but then it's just some light infantry. Probably want to send them up just to do some more skirmishing. Yeah, the uh, poles here have been broken. Poles just seem to not be able to hold. Uh, French are still breaking. They've broken another unit of the light dragoon. It's not even light dragoons, it's dragoons. And there you go. It's broken. Gone. Now the French can turn around and uh, sort out this French. Uh, it's not even French. This uh, British infantry. And there you go. The Dragoon. Uh, why don't I want to call everything different things today? Uh, the uh, Grenadiers for the Poles are broken. And those light infantry going in now aren't going to win either. Like I said, just break everything first. Then go into the building. And what is there? Six units left of British. If that... Coltrane Guards are still alive, I think. How much is in there? I can't even sell. There's two units, definitely. I think the Coltrane Guards have been pulled out. Got Frederick of York in there. Got the Foot Guards. I think the Coltrane Guards got pulled out. French are firing as well doing their best. And 
there you go, you can see the poles are still storming in. There's still 90 of them in this unit. They're still trying to storm this building. They're not going to take it. And the morale keeps going up and down, though, like a seesaw. Got line infantry here setting up again. They are really flanking the, uh, the British here. The French, though, must be uh, starting to take a lot of losses. They've been in, they're going to take out three armies. The French have helped take out all three armies right now. Portugal, they took single-handedly. Held expedition needed a lot of damage too, uh, and the British they helped finish off. I don't think the Poles could have done it on their own to be honest. They didn't have the quality. Firing into this marsh here. Our men are running for. More French breaking though. They are, like I said, they're starting to take losses, and uh, morale's starting to take a bit of a hit, I think, because of the tiredness. But the French, uh, the British must be even lower on morale and stuff like that, so... The French, I think the French have got this. They've probably got this pretty much wrapped up. Bring up some uh, light infantry here. It's a bit close for these uh, poles. They don't need to get this close. But they just seem to be willing to just charge everything in, the poles. And they're going to get rowdy doing that. Seems a bit bizarre the Poles just charging everything in, but maybe that's just the Polish way. Maybe that's just the Polish way. If we can kill the general for uh, Britain, that'll be a big win. I think Britain's actually just been fully routed. It's actually down to the Helder expedition in this building. So this is kind of going to be it. What's in here? Got Frederick, like I said, Frederick of uh, York and Albany. And you got some uh, got some infantry as well. I actually don't even think... Yeah, there's still infantry in here. The foot guards still in there. They'll just fire into this building. I just need to get some arty up here, force them out. But I think all their arty has been killed. Like the French and the Swiss and the Poles did not look after their arty one bit. Like we started the battle with some artillery just been sniped out by cavalry. Um, the French had theirs sniped. I mean, in fairness, it actually is still alive. Um, the gun crew is very much alive over here. The men are fatigued, so, um, must rest a while. so I presume, yeah, I presume actually the Bedfordshire Light Dragoons did not survive because they must have been robbed by the second gun unit. Um... But, yeah, so it's just, I presume that they won that. I mean, and there you go. It looks like, uh, so this is what's going to be left. Is everyone just charging out? Oh, Coltrane Guard's breaking there. There you go. This, they were still in there. I just can't see, like, all the units stacked up on top of each other. There's so much in there, it would seem. Yeah, very hard to tell. That's it. That is definitely it. They're going to storm everything with this. This is a make or break scenario. See French going in, Poles going in. They're going to try and storm this. The guards in here. I wouldn't bother be wanting to storm this. What are they bringing up now? Eventually they've got to probably win this. You can see the green bar starting to go up a little better. But not much. They've got to kill. They've got to be breaking these. Yeah, these foot guards are down to 28 men. They've got to be like eventually going to be able to win some of this, these fights. But we'll just fast forward, because all it is is just a melee combat in here. How they're still firing unit, like there's men still firing in here. There must be like two foot guards holding the door. Uh, but I think they're actually breaking now. Yeah, it's just down to Frederick of York. And that is going to be the battle. Oh, the British actually have got a unit general, here. Sir. The British now still have got units here. Break. What am I on about? The, British, the battle's not over at all. We've got still some Hindustan and uh, Cornwall regiments still alive. They're going to take on the fight. I mean, we'll just fast forward till they actually get back in a battle. But, uh... The Britain's not finished. They're going to have another go of it. But they have killed the general of uh, Helder Expedition. Though he's not finished either. He's going to try and take down another Polish regiment with him. What a madman. The French are going in as well. They really want to kill this general. There you go. He's gone. They recaptured that building. And now they're going to just retreat. Are they British? I think they're probably just going to make a stand somewhere. They might just go and capture another building. Making themselves a nuisance. They need, uh, where's Davu? We could just get him to just run up and he could probably uh, route these two units. If not, then it's not going to be ended well. They still have a unit over here as well. How have the British just got units, like, all over the place? They've got uh, Roald Dillon's here, which is, I presume is just, like, a, the name that they just named out the, like, regiment after. They've just got units all over the place. The Held Expedition has a unit over here as well. Oh, my gosh. They have musketeers here. They have Russian musketeers all the way over here. Um, so yeah, we're just fast forwarding until they like deal with all these little combats. Got a Russian musket in it. They are really going to make themselves a nuisance, aren't they? Um, <laughs> but there you go. Hopefully the French are going to send units in different directions to deal with all these threats. 
So even with the Poles, the Poles could just chase after all these Brits. Yeah, they're beelining, I think, for that building. That farmhouse all the way at the back there. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to fast forward. Just keep it fast forward and just uh, see what happens. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this battle. It's certainly been a very, very fun one. Uh, I definitely feel like the French, if they hadn't turned up, um, the Poles and the Swiss were getting beaten quite easily. If, say, like, the French and the Portuguese kind of just had their standoff for a lot longer... Which I think is what Portugal wanted. Um, the, the two like British armies, as they basically are, the Helder and uh, the British army, they would have um, they would have beaten the Swiss and the Poles. The Swiss is just a, I think they're like a five point army, which is like they're not with like the points is like how good their army is. So they're not a great army, and I think the um, the Poles are like maybe seven or eight. Um, so they're not amazing either. But I think eighteen oh five, eighteen oh eight, France is a pretty strong faction. Um, and you can see they're storming this building here now. Um, so in they go. The green bar's going up a little bit. They might want to send some more men in there. They're actually outnumbered. 71. Yeah, they're outnumbered by all these units in here. This is a volunteer in fairness. So this might just break at any point. That one, Roll Dillon's, is also not so great by the looks of it. Yeah, here we go. Some more units going in. French didn't bring any grenadiers. Just realized. French did not bring any grenadiers. Davu is over here. I don't know if Davu's dead. I don't think he is. I think he might be a that chap there with his uh, fancy martial hat. Britain's in a, a sorry state here, though. Morale is not looking so great. So neither is the French. So hard to commentate on a on a melee battle in here. Like the melee battles in like Napoleon are just so boring. Well, they're not boring, but they're so uninspiring. How is this French infantry unit doing so well? Need to send more in there. Support this unit. Send one more in. It probably breaks it. Yeah, here he goes. He goes in now as the unit breaks. Maybe you can send a second one in. They should in time just break this, you imagine. I don't know. Maybe they won't. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they'll be broken here. The Poles are sending up all their troops. They're actually... The Britain's, Britain's going off. Oh, no. He's, he's going to go for that building. Just get on the road. Just get on the road so he gets there quicker. Smart. Uh, forming column. And... Uh, I wonder if they're going for time, because if they hold the buildings, I guess they win on points. But Britain, uh, France, sorry, does have this building. So uh, I don't know if that's, that's probably worth a fair amount. I don't actually know. If, ah, there's not actually any value to the, the points. I don't think you can win by points. Maybe they're just going for pure survival. These Royal Dillons now are uh, the only ones in here. It looks like the uh, volunteers, wherever they are. Yep, there they are, coming out of the building. They are breaking. Loyal Lincoln. Oh, well, they've not done Lincoln very proud. Uh, any pride there? My hometown, well, not my hometown at all. Where I am for uni will not be happy. But Lincoln men broke at the side of some Frenchies. They're now actually fighting on top of the thing, so we can actually see what's going on. It's quite cool. I imagine the British will lose this now. They're outnumbered. We've there you go. The Finally taken that one. So there's another one gone. And now it's just uh, this one over here, which is about to get occupied by two British units, which is uh, a Hindustan unit. The uh, Hindustan Foot uh, Older Mortals. That's a cool name. And then the uh, Cornwall Foot, the Red Feathers. And then we've got some Russians over here. I don't know how well they'll hold. But they're about to get uh, besieged by these three infantry units, which are relatively healthy. 84, 90... This one's not so healthy. They actually look like they were going to get out of the building. Look like the Russians were going to just decide, nah, we're going to fight them in the field. That would be a terrible idea. Um, but again, we'll fast forward um, just because, well, there's just a lot of just a lot of chasing down of units. Like I said, some artillery would just be a better way to just pound these buildings to scale them off. Actually, one this unit... Building has fallen to the You're kidding enemy. me. Another one... This one is going to go all the way over here and take this building. So you're going to make it even more of a problem. I may just fast forward and just cut out all of this. Um, if I haven't, then, well, I do apologize. Um, because it's just quite... The there up. you go. They finally taken it. What building they just captured? Are they honestly just rushing for buildings as well? I think they are. Um, they've taken the musketeers out. That's big. Um, just the just the ones in the north to go. No, there's not. You're kidding me. Of course, there's more. Helder expedition. They've just honestly put a load of Russian units, haven't they? The Helder expedition and that 
Loyal Lincoln volunteers the returned. Fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. Well, that's always a problem. But yeah, there's another one all the way over here, which uh, the French are now going to have to go and deal with as well. Frustrating as hell. I don't think these musketeers are good, though. Um, and they're getting pretty beaten up at these Hindustan units just from being shot by the uh, uh, light infantry. I think they've broken already. Or, or they just can't be seen, one or the other. No, they get, there's definitely shots coming from the building. They're just in here. I imagine the time is going to run out, I think, before they take all these buildings. Someone just made a terrible noise when they died there. Just die in peacefully, man. Don't need to, like, make a noise, like, song and dance about it. The officer there, look at that with his musk, uh, with his pistol. Pretty awesome. British there in the windows though they're still firing they don't care. The men are fatigued sir and must rest a while. Line infantry just sn sniping them away sniping away need to get some uh, line infantry to storm this building. But at this rate I mean the poles the line infantry just breaks on impact at the moment their infantry like I said at the beginning of the battle not that great uh, but it looks like yeah there's a uh, like light infantry fire onto this building doing quite a lot for morale. That Lincoln unit is going to have to try and storm that building, and that's a... Oh, it's Roald Dillon's, in fact. I think the Lincoln volunteers. Yeah, they broke again. What cowards. What a load of cowards. And you can see the uh, French. It looks like the French, actually... They're just shooting units here. I think they're going to just go for this house here. Uh, are the French. Quite possibly. But uh, I imagine we're going to see the Poles in a moment storm this building. They don't want to have their, inf their line infantry overlapping their line infantry, because these lights will just shoot into the back of their own infantry. Do a lot of damage to morale. But uh, it looks pretty even. The British... Yeah, they're breaking. Okay, there you go. Another one taken. Uh, I imagine that the French will win now because they have a lot more points. And they also have more units. So I think, the yeah, it's going to come down to this. It's literally going to come down to time. I'm just going to fast forward because, uh, yeah, all we're just going to see is uh, units just quickly being routed by the French, etc. And actually, they're routing over here. What are they routing here? Oh, no, this is the French routing. They got beaten back by the uh, musketeers here. Okay, so they might hold these two at the very edges of the map. But uh, really, One the of French. Our units has used all its ammunition, sir. Wow, someone's used all its ammo. Wow. Um, but really, the French and their allies have taken the field. The Poles actually might get to this one and take it in time, but they don't need to. They hold a enough positions, and yeah, that is going to be the battle, I imagine. The time has run out, and it was a draw, but I will give a victory to the French. I personally think the French have won that one. Um, but yeah, so there we go. There is the uh, the end results. Uh, the French getting so many more kills. They're getting two uh, two thousand kills, while the other two um, armies between them could not even get anywhere close to that. But yeah, so we have a uh, jihad here who was playing as the um, as the Swiss. We then have uh, Joseph Anthony uh, Pontini uh, Pontinowski, or however you say his name. I definitely probably butchered that. And then we have. Uh, uh, J, uh, J Master here who was um, playing as the French and he was the one who sent in this replay so thank you very much to him um, very much appreciated and then uh, we got Kamin playing as the Helber, Helder ex Expedition we have uh, Toy Garu who was playing as the Peninsular Army and Rafta playing as the Portuguese and uh, yeah poor Portugal here only getting 600 odd kills um, but I mean the British do equally as well as the French these were clearly the two like uh, juggernaut armies but yeah we'll quickly have a look at some of the unit stats I mean, you've got this um, well, this infantry unit here, 264 kills, uh, which bested the Carassias, which had 259 kills. The Dragoons getting 184, uh, Line Infantry getting 135, more Dragoons getting 126. And yeah, there are the rest of the kills. Did really, really well um, with most of his units, to be fair. But yes, if you enjoyed, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and don't forget to leave a comment to show your support. And I will see you guys in the next NTW3 battle. Bye for now.